Hello fellas! In this video I'm going to fight a 1 to 70 second scale Yak 23 Flora kit from Special Hobby. Before I begin the bashing I will point out that this kit is pretty old so there is that. Starting with the cockpit there are a lot of details, plastic, photo edge and resin. On the ugly side the instructions are useless and the correct placement of any detail is a guess game, as the location tabs either don't exist or are worse than that. As usual, most of the tools and materials I use you can find in the description. Those are affiliate links and if you use them, you help the channel without extra cost for you. Since the cockpit is pretty small, the most important aspect of the painting stage is to make things more prominent and visible. This will be achieved by picking out the raised details and the edges using paint that is very contrasting to the base color. The instrument panel will greatly benefit from a simple dry brushing. The same goes for the backrest cushion. Some careful detail painting will bring some life in this otherwise grey and boring cockpit. Next up, an overall gloss coat.
after the ghost coat had sufficient time to cure, it is time to paint the air intake and the engine. Nice and shiny polished aluminum should do a great job. The next step will be to apply some panel line wash. There are many ways to remove the excess wash. Here I'll be using brush damped with white spirit and then a cotton bud. The final touch for this area is a coat of flat varnish. The cockpit does not come together very easily. Since I am attaching everything to the right fuselage half, it took a lot of effort to make sure that all that fits nicely inside the left fuselage half because initially that was not the case. The mating surfaces of the wing to the fuselage joints were far from perfect. And although I spent a lot of time trimming and dry fitting, there was still a lot of space for some 2K epoxy putty. After all was done, the joint came out pretty good. I added the final details in the cockpit and then installed the canopy. It comes in one piece, so the visibility towards the cockpit is far from great. The panel lines are good but a bit shallow, so I went ahead and deepened them using my scraper. I also chose to add rivet details, as this is quite prominent feature of those early jets. If you are interested in an in-depth riveting tutorial, there is a link for one in the description. After the scribing and the riveting were done, I completed the assembly. Another useful tutorial that I can recommend is my natural metal finish tutorial. Again, the link will be in the description. In essence, after a layer of primer, I lay down a coat of gloss black. Then come a few light coats of polished aluminum, which is followed by a coat of metalizer sealer from Model Master. Unfortunately, the sealer is now discontinued and for this reason I haven't included it in the materials list. If you know another clear coat that works good on natural metal finishes, leave a comment below the video. To make things more interesting, I masked off a few panels using various tapes 
and liquid mask from Abteilung. Then I sprayed the exposed surfaces with a 50-50 mix of polished aluminium and dark aluminium. Now I have a very nice and subtle sheen and tonal variation. Using a circle cutter I made masks for the wheels. Then I sprayed the wheels, the gear legs, the gear base and the inside of the gear bay doors in neutral grey. After a layer of satin varnish, I dry brushed the raised details with light grey. The mandatory panel line wash followed closely. With that out of the way, I can move on to the next step. I chose to build this model only because I could do it with Bulgarian Air Force markings. I have a few locally produced sets for those and while the decals themselves are not great, at least I have the opportunity to build a collection of planes that served in my own country's Air Force. As far as the actual decal placement process, I will again recommend one of my tutorials, which is specifically about dealing with decals. The wearing process starts with a black panel line wash. Initially I tried the dark grey one but it was not looking good so I switched to black.
apart from the wash, all the subsequent weathering will be done with oils. Starting with the markings, I used buff oil paint to make them look more faded. Oils can be nicely blended and the unwanted paint can be easily removed with some white spirit. Using Starship Field, I started picking up various panels by fading the paint away from the panel line and cleaning any unwanted paint with white spirit to obtain sharp transition from one side of the panel line to the other. On the upper wing surfaces I did some accents on the panel lines using the Starship field. Using buff color I did accents on the rivet lines. After I was happy with the weathering, I applied another coat of Model Master Metalizer Sealer. For the rear shock absorber struts, I used self adhesive aluminum tape. For the front I actually added this detail because it was not represented in the kit. For this task I used hypodermic needle. Fitting the undercarriage to the fuselage was a bit of a nightmare. 
Again, no or extremely vague location points made my life miserable. And finally, after all the struggle, this model is complete. If you really want a 1 to 7 second scale Yak 23, there is not much choice, but otherwise I cannot recommend this kit to anyone. Anyhow, this is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did so, give it a like. And as usual, until next time, happy modeling fellas!